Well, thank you for that. The blaze is also having a huge impact on local attractions. KPIX 5's John Ramos uh, reports how even wineries that were spared by the fire are taking a big hit. Some of the wineries along Silverado Trail suffered only minor losses, like these solar panels bordering the burned hillside. But farther up the road, Fairwinds Estate Winery has been devastated. The tasting room, bottling operation, and fermentation tanks were all under the same roof, and now the wines stored in these barrels appear to be a total loss. The fire also had its way with Hourglass Winery. The 160-year-old residence that served as a welcome center for guests has been leveled. It also melted the plastic roof over the tanks, probably destroying the 2020 vintage. But owner Jeff Smith says because last year's wine was protected in an underground cave, the business will at least have some revenue this year. It sounds like winemaking is not for the faint of heart these days. I don't think winemaking has ever been for the faint of heart, but, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but even wineries that escaped the fire are still feeling the pinch. Road closures, power outages, and foul air have killed the tourist trade for now, which not only hurts wine sales, but every other hospitality business. Ed Brown was buying gas for the generator at his bed and breakfast that has been without power for 36 hours. So it's screwing with our business big time. And we're losing uh, customers left and right. We lost them to COVID. Now we're losing them to the fires. It's tough times. Yeah, it's, it's hard. You know, you stack a few of these on top of each other and it starts to have a psychological effect. But, you know, we're an incredibly resilient community. Eventually, the air will clear and blackened hillsides will be green again, and the tourists will return. And those who stayed to rebuild will be rewarded for not being faint of heart. In Napa Valley, John Ramos, KPIX 5.